Uh, hi, thank you for joining us. I'm Shannon Smith, the Senior Vice President of Sales at Social Club. I'm joined with Justin Barton from Black Enterprise. Justin, could you introduce yourself? Yes. Hi, nice to see everybody um, on this virtual conference. I'm Justin Barton, Senior Vice President of Digital Strategy and Partnerships at Black Enterprise. So my realm includes um, the content team, the ad ops team, the programmatic team, the video team, um, the social team. So pretty much handling all there, there is to do with digital at Black Enterprise. Um, that's what you know. I pretty much encompass. Great, thank you, Justin. So, so we asked Justin to join us for uh, Roar, uh, our user conference, because we've had a, a long relationship, a good relationship mm -hmm. with Justin here at Black Enterprise and formerly at iHeart. Um, and in his role at Black Enterprise, they sit in a unique position to really see you know how 2020 affected media and publishing. Um, so I have a couple of questions that I put together um, for Justin. So let's dive right in. Yes. Um, so first, you know, how did the pandemic affect your newsroom? You know, everyone kind of has a different story. Love to hear yours. Yeah. So, you know, really for Black Enterprise, um, historically as a company, well, Black Enterprise was a magazine for 50 years. So started in 1970, our 50th anniversary happened to be in the pandemic year of 2020. Um, our newsrooms are always in person. Everybody sat there, the writers, um, we crank out stories that way. Um, there was a lot of oversight. And obviously, um, when the pandemic hit, it was definitely a culture shock for Black Enterprise going from the in-person brick and mortar type um, you know, workplace to now going virtual. Um, but really, you know, we really dived into it, delved into it really deeply, and we're able to, um, you know, change our ways, you know, make sure that we were doing things on Slack, make sure we were keeping in touch with everybody, and finding a new way of distributing stories, um, the editors speaking to each other, um, you know, the social team being able to distribute the content. Um, so, uh, you know, it was a total ecosystem change that we were able to do at Black Enterprise, really on the fly, and, and as many newsrooms were able to do as well. Great, thank you. That actually uh, uh, kind of touches on the second question I had. What processes did you put in place? You know, most newsrooms had to put something in place when they when they went virtual. Mm -hmm. What did you put in place that kind of really worked for Black Enterprise? And, and what do you think you'll continue after? You know, when everyone's kind of back in the office, if we ever get back in the office. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think the the main thing editorially was um, changing the way our Slack channels were really managed. So each individual writer has their own Slack channel. The senior editors then would take stories and filter them down to those Slack channels. Discussions would happen in, in the open. So everybody can see that Slack channel it was never private. And people can then discuss which stories they would like to cover, which stories are part of their beat, um, and, and which things are working well. The, ed the editors and writers can then make suggestions amongst each other. Um, so that was the first real main thing that we had changed where in person, it was easy to just scream to the person over there, this story, scream to the person, that story. But in this realm, it was, we were doing it via Slack and making sure we were having discussions in Slack and making sure um, that really uh, there was a dialogue that was happening between the writers and the editors. So they were picking the correct stories. Uh, you know, from my standpoint, where I sat, it was really working with the editors to make sure they were sourcing the correct stories. So making sure they were using um, the analytical basis tools, whether that's a crowd tangler news loop or buzz sumo, along with, you know, different Google alerts for the different subject matters we cover. And then having all that lead into it, its own Slack channels and then surfacing the content from there and then parsing it out to the different writers. So it was a total workflow change than the in-person workflow change. But um, I guess I'll talk about growth later, but from where we came to, from the pandemic to where we are now, hopefully at the end of the pandemic, we've seen um, significant traffic increases at Black Enterprise. Great. And that, that actually, the traffic is something I wanted to touch on. Mm -hmm. How did you, how did the, I don't know if it's necessarily the pandemic, but how did you see your viewership get affected or how did you see it change? during the pandemic, during 2020? Yeah, so at first there was a real lull. Um, you know, people didn't know what was going on in the world. It was just a change of pace um, for everybody. Uh, you know, children were doing, in, um, you know, virtual in, uh, schooling. Um, everybody moved from their office place to essentially at home. There was a, just a whole total sea change there. But a few weeks into it, when people got their sea legs under the, the new norm, as we call it, we saw, you know, significant traffic upswings of just people being at home and consuming um, tons of information, whether it's on COVID, whether it was on 
um, you know, just workplace, uh, you know, all those different types of things that we cover as a business oriented brand, people were really involved with. So, you know, we went from when I started the company, and this is prior to the pandemic, July 2019, from about 400,000 UVs to where we are, let's say last month, August, according to Google Analytics, we were at 11.5 million UVs. And hopefully when ComStore comes out in a few days, we'll see it at a 10 plus million um, number. So we've seen significant traffic increases as people have learned what Black Enterprise has to offer and making sure that we're, you know, super serving the content to our audience, wherever they may be, whether that's socially, whether that's on the distributed apps, whether that's on our O&O platforms, whether that's on our, um, on our OTT platforms, wherever that is, we want to make sure that we're super serving our audience. That's great. Those are some really, really big numbers. You know, mm -hmm. we did a white paper that we saw traffic increases pretty much across the board, but not to that scale. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so during the pandemic though, you know, you see you had this extra traffic coming in, but content creation was a little bit more difficult because everyone was dispersed, everyone was spread out. You didn't have the usual tools. Did you, how did you repurpose content or how did you make sure you have enough or, or had enough content and have enough content for this increased viewership? Yes. So one of the things, at least for Black Enterprises point of view is, the pandemic forced us to make um, significant business changes. So like I mentioned, Black Enterprise was a magazine, but we also had a really big in-person event business. Essentially the pandemic hits, people really aren't reading mag magazines and there is no in-person event business. So we had to change the entire model. And what we did was we sunset um, the magazine after our 50th anniversary of, um, issue. And we took all those resources and we put them back into journalism editorial. So at that time, obviously there was, you know, a lot of layoffs that were happening in the, in the digital space, um, the journalist, journalistic space. And we were able to take advantage of that to hire really great diverse talent that was on the market and bring them to black enterprise. So we increased our editorial ranks probably by seven. Um, so we had seven new writers who came on board. We have weekend writers now that are coming on board. And what, what we essentially did was, you know, I'm a big believer um, in the mullet strategy. So it's, you know, clean in the front, party in the back. And to a certain extent, um, we cover a lot of different stories, not just business stories. So in the front, we show a lot of business oriented stories, but like a similar publication, Forbes was general market. We cover everything from news, politics, social justice, lifestyle, um, travel, all those different um, different verticals of content we now cover. So we've increased our stories to probably maybe 600 articles we're doing a month. And that has really, you know, um, filtered down to the traffic that we're having now as we have more content out there, we're having more hits, we're more people, more opportunity for people to read us. And then therefore, obviously, the unique viewership of our content is going up. That's great. Thank you. And, and that actually brings up um a question I had and a question that we have on on content itself. Mm -hmm. So 2020, we had the pandemic, we had the election, mm -hmm. but we also had a very big and an incredibly important story for our nation with George Floyd. Yes. And where Black Enterprise sits and, and the publication that it is, you know, it's it's very important to hear your story and how you covered it and what it meant yeah. to Black Enterprise. So we'd like for you to touch on that a little bit. No, certainly. And um, like I was mentioning, one of the verticals that we really um, moved towards was social justice. Um, our founder, Earl Graves Sr., he certainly, he was part of the Bobby Kennedy campaign when he was assassinated. He was uh, certainly with all the civil rights leaders um, back in the 70s and the 80s for all that time. And we want to make sure that was also a part of the DNA of Black enterprise. So after George Floyd, we covered um, you know, that story. We made sure that so social, social justice is a big part of what Black Enterprise is about. And even to this uh, day, um, over a year later, we're having what we call racial um, equity town halls, which we have once a month. We cover multiple subjects uh, surrounding these type of topics of how to make sure that the, the Black and Brown communities are you know, getting their fair share and their worth within society. So it's something that, like I said, even though we had a business DNA, we had some social justice DNA as well. And then we took that to you know, bring black, black, black Enterprise to a different level. And that's what you're seeing right now is a lot of content that we're doing is surrounding the social justice movement. And that it has helped us you know, with our engagement overall. All right, all right, thank you. Uh, and, and that does kind of, 
one of the things that we're seeing a lot with with our publishing clients um, through the pandemic is you know you have the engagement but ad revenue kind of dropped so they focus more on subscription so you're kind of balancing between the business content social justice content uh, a, a very large increase in engagement and viewership but what are you seeing as the drivers going forward for revenue uh, the revenue drivers for the business well, well certainly I, I would say this uh, you know Black enterprise being a little unique in this situation. One of the things we saw during um, the tragedy of George Floyd was a renewed um, sense of um, attention from the digital ad agencies. So if you look at a Group M or IPG, many of them have several brands within the repertoire, which they have said are gonna spend from two to 5% of their um, you know, media budgets on black owned media. So with our new um, traffic numbers that we have, the new high traffic numbers, which make us the number one um, black media brand in the space, we've seen the dollars from the agencies um, flow with that and come with that. So it's actually been, um, I would say a really great 12 months for black enterprise or 15 months for black enterprise. It's been obviously very um, unfortunate for the world and you know the 670,000 plus deaths um, in the United States, but as a media brand itself and what we're doing with the new traffic, this has been um, certainly a renewed focus on the mission we have and what we're doing. So we've been able to survive in the um, ad supported space. We do have plans in the future. Um, we've started a, you know, a small um, OTT app. Um, we wanna branch out from there. We're on the Fox Soul OTT platforms as well. So we have um, the eight o'clock hour right now, soon to be the 10 o'clock hour on Fox Soul. All of our different web shows are shown there. And you know, we are looking towards a subscription model for um, more engaging content, for more of our in-person events that are starting back in 2022, and as well as you know um, specials and different virtual um, events that we want to have for a member group. So we're going to delve into the um, subscription model very soon. But right now we're having you know we're really um, starting to see success in the digital ad space that we hadn't seen previously, and a lot of our competitors are seeing the same thing. That's great. Thank you. Um, as you're focusing on the ads and you have this engagement numbers coming in, there's been a couple of big, big changes that have also happened, you know, with iOS 14 and how you can track, um, with Google talking about getting rid of, you know, first party cookies yeah. or third party cookies. They given a little, little bit of a reprieve for two years, but, but it is on the horizon. Yeah. Are you currently doing anything to uh, combat that or to focus on that or figure out how you can kind of go back to your advertisers and show like this sure. is what's happening on, on yeah. the site? So, so one of the things is making sure we're growing our first party data. Um, we've always had coming from a magazine subscription business, we've always had a pretty good email newsletter list. So we have a lot of email um, addresses. We're doing a lot of active capture um, or maybe it's progressive capture is what it's called. So we're making sure we're getting, um, you know, name and you know, first name, last name, you know, sometimes where people work different things like that. So we're trying to build our first party data that way. In addition to that, we're with all the different other, um, I would say vendors or partners, we're coming up with, you know, um, cookie list IDs. So I'm not gonna name all of them, but you know, we're testing, I would say four or five of them right now. And um, they'll have, you know, certain scripts on our page that are allowing them to really, um, you know, build out that identification, um, uh, you know, really um, model that they're doing. And um, we'll see who wins out or where the industry goes. You know, I'm not one who's you know, gonna stake a position one way or the other. I'm gonna let the industry decide um, VH, VHS or Betamax, like let that happen um, based on people who are smarter than me. But I wanna make sure that we're playing in that pond with all the different um, vendors who are coming up with solutions. Great, awesome, thank you. So last couple of questions. What do you see as, you know, people are looking at, at Facebook and, and Twitter, obviously, uh, some YouTube, you know, TikTok's, you know, getting bigger and bigger. What do you see as, you know, the future? Where are you going to focus some of your energy in the next 12 to 18 months? Yeah, so I think, you know, we've had like a really great relationship with Facebook um, on multiple levels. So, you know, we're part of the Facebook news tab. Um, which allows us to essentially give them a feed that is, they populate and curate our content along with, you know, several other big brands um, on that certain news tab you might see on your, your smart new, I mean, your smartphone um, app or, you know, even on the desktop, they now have it. Um, but at the same time, I, we're looking towards making sure that we're touching 
all the other social media platforms that are coming up. So we're going to make a push into TikTok because it's been very successful. I, I've seen it's been very successful. One of my predecessors or one of my former companies, Daily Mail. Um, and then, you know, we've been delving into the, the, the clubhouse arena um, and playing there a little bit as well. So, um, you know, we, we're making sure that we're trying to touch the audience wherever they are. We want to make sure that we're growing um, a younger audience uh, to come to Black Enterprise and understand what it has to offer. So we're trying to give a little bit of the entertainment, but making sure that, you know, we're rooted in business. And there's a lot of people out there that are looking to make money. They're looking into home investing, uh, investing in a home. They're looking into retirement. They're looking into cryptocurrency. And we have content for all that. And it's really geared for a um, you know minority audience, and we want to be a leader in that space, speaking to that audience. So whether we have to you know speak to them on um, Facebook or Instagram, or even go down to TikTok and really um, get the younger the younger audience, we're willing to do that, and that's um, our plan in the future is to really double down on those platforms. That's great. Well, Justin Barton, I want to thank you for your time. That was some great great insights and really helpful for our, our users and, and us. Yes, thank and you. thank you, Shannon, and thank you, Social Flow, for having me back again. Thank you. All right, thanks.